Uh, it comes from um, John 15, 13. Greater love has no man than this, that a man will lay down his life for a friend. So that's where our name comes from. And we I added on the fellowship because I truly believe that everything is about fellowship. All right. You know, he tells us to sit not the assembly of the saints. You know, we all to come together. We all to fellowship and have a good time. And I truly believe that because of COVID, you know, when we went through COVID, you know, the world taught us that we need to be separated. We need to, you know, everything is online. Everything is, you know, you need to keep social distancing. And a lot of us, we still are in that mode. You know, we don't fellowship like we used to. We don't, you know, we don't we don't hang out like we used to. We don't come together and have church in the sense of our fellowship outside of these four walls like we used to. And I truly believe we need to get back to that because I need you and you need me. Amen. Amen. You know, we can have that vertical fellowship, but we also need that 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 horizontal fellowship. All right. With you and I. Amen. Amen. So our, our vision statement um, for greater love. It's a community-focused ministry with invigorating faith to serve this present age. I need to say that again. It's a community-focused ministry with invigorating faith to serve this present age. Amen. Now, that, that, that says a lot about who we are. You know, we, we work our way back to present age. That's everybody. That's all generations. We just don't want to minister, minister to uh, young folk. The, the, the middle-aged people, our, our millennials, our, our seasoned folk, we want to minister to everybody. Amen, we, want to be, we, we, want, we want to be a multi-dimensional church. And also, we want to have an invigorating faith. You know, everything we do is about faith. Greater faith, greater works, greater love. Greater faith. We want to have greater faith. Uh, having faith uh, means that you don't have no sense. You know, say it like that. Yeah. Faith means you have no sense. Because faith takes away all your senses. Can I say it like that? Uh -huh. What are our senses? I can't see it. I can't hear it. You know, I can't. I can't taste it. It's one of those senses. I can't smell it. I can't touch it. Yeah, faith takes away all of your senses. You know, I can hear it in the spirit realm, but I can't hear it in the physical. I can see it in the spiritual realm, but I can't see it in the physical. That means you have, you have to walk with no senses at all. We walk by faith and not by sight. Somebody know the word. So that is, that's, the mission, that's our mission statement, our vision statement, that we want to have invigorating faith to serve this present age in our community. For those of you that don't know, I'm Pastor Love. <laughs> That's called really. Amen. So, the way we do ministry, uh, you know, we have GLF room, we have GLF for school, and really, there's no difference in the ministry. You can worship here, you can worship there, you know, you can go either way. He can come here and preach, I can go there and preach, it, it doesn't matter. But most of the time, I'm here, and he is in Brooklyn, he lives in Brooklyn, that's all that lives in Brooklyn. So, uh, that's all. Well, I got tricked into this ministry for those of you who don't have uh, He was talking about service, and people ask me all the time, like, man, how are y'all always here and always doing this? And, you know, where do y'all sleep? But the whole purpose of this ministry is to serve the community. You know, we have a, a nursing home ministry, a senior's ministry. So we're always at this nursing home. We have a uh, recovery ministry for those that are dealing with addiction. And I think that where we got lost at is we laid out the foundation for the ministry and we just took off and started doing it and not really pushing the fact that this is for the entire church. So we laid out ministry and vision. Um, what I was thinking about back there is making sure everybody understands that we all have a place. You know, God has called everyone in this church to do all of these things that we're doing. It's up to Pastor Love and I to set the example for serving the community. But there's so many voids in our area because we really had to push the fact that these ministries that we have started is for you. Like there's a name attached to every soul in this city. Every soul in the world. God has called us. You know, we look at the traditional church, we look at all the things that some of us come from, 
You know, I've had people come to the GLF group and say, I come here just because I'm tired of all the tradition. I'm tired of all of this. And, you know, I'm not against tradition because some of the tradition made us who we are. Amen. You know? Amen. We don't focus on tradition. Amen. We don't focus on religion. But all of these things that people say, I left my church or I left this place because I was tired of that. But then God gives you an opportunity to be who you are Amen. in him. And you still sit on the church pew and don't do anything about it. So I believe that the call to ministry is more than just saying, I'm called to preach or I'm called to minister. You know, it's giving people the confidence to step out and do the things that God has called them to do. So going forward with Bruton and with Frisco, you know, Brandon and I, we talked about it. It's about getting the right people in the right place Amen. to do what God has called them to do. Amen. Because the Great Commission wasn't to come, you know, I love seeing y'all beautiful faces on Sunday morning. But the Great Commission was to go, to make disciples, make disciples of Jesus Christ, give people what they need, the confidence they need to step outside of this church and win souls. Amen. 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 I just thought that he was talking. I was thinking, you know, everybody walked through the four year. I, I thought it was a little good. Oh, it was good. Yeah. It's called progress. Amen. You know, when we first get, when we first moved here, you know, ceiling tiles missing in the hallway. You know, there was no bathroom. Now there's a bathroom in, in, in the four year. Listening and uh, Jesus, there's over 170 women mentioned in the Bible. And in the Gospel of Luke, Jesus talking to his disciples, and he said, Remember Lot's wife. Out of all the women in the Bible, he says, Remember Lot's wife. The only thing that's mentioned about his wife is that she looked back. All right. Y'all miss it. They were supposed to be moving forward. God said, don't look back at what happened, what has happened in your past. He said, keep moving forward. And Jesus said, remember Lot's wife. And I just came to tell a few of us that it's, it's time out for us looking back. You know, I know some of, some of our parents don't look that good. Some of our mistakes in the, back, in the past, we have to keep moving forward. And stop looking back. Because guess what? When you start looking backwards, guess what happened to her? She turned into a pillar of salt. And every time we look back, we get salty. Uh, there's somebody here today. You keep remembering. You keep thinking about what it used to be like. What it used to be. And God says, stop looking back because you're salty. You need to move forward. And the only way to move forward, when I was working on the foyer, I was waiting for um, more material, more funds to come in. And the Lord said, use what you already have. Yeah. Yeah. He said, you, you have everything. All, all the stuff you see on the walls, all the paint, it's just been sitting back there. Mm. But I was waiting for everything to get everything. He said, use what you have oh, yeah. and watch me do it. Yeah. Yeah. And as I start putting paint on the wall, other stuff starts showing up. As I start putting the letters and all that stuff on the wall, other things start showing up. Because how God works. Is that when he gives you vision, yes, yes. he gives he give you the promise, which is the end, yes. and he gives you the commission to go. But he don't give you the in-between. Because he understands that if he gave you the in-between, many of us, we were like, you have that promise. <laughs> look, look, look at Joseph. Joseph, God told him, gave him a promise, and told him he was going to be blessed, and he was going he to lead his brothers, and, and lead his father, he's going to lead a nation. And Joseph is, um, he's on fire. And telling his brothers about the dream and everything. But if Joseph had known that he was going to have to go into a pit, that he was going to be thrown into prison, Joseph probably would have said, I don't want to do this. And we have to understand that in between the commission and the, and the actual uh, fulfillment of the promise, we're going to have problems. Yeah. We're going to have problems. It causes us to grow. So I, I want to let you know, we have to use what we have. Each pastor said, each and every one of us, we have a gift. We all have something that we bring to the table. Matter of fact, I was thinking about this morning, 
And I heard, I heard God say that the church is a basketball team. I said a basketball team. So y'all know me, I Google. All right now. What are the different positions on a basketball team? You know, you, you, you have folk that uh, they all, they, they, they're the, uh, what do they call it? The uh, point guard. Yeah, I'm not a basketball player. Point guard. Point guard leads everything. Right. You know, yeah. They know how to pass. They know how to lead the team, get them down the court. Mm -hmm. Those are the leaders in the church. They know how to get the people where they need to be. But I don't know, you got some blockers. All right, all right. You got to have some folk in the congregation and say, I block. You know what? We, we, ain't, say, no, we ain't talking about my church. <laughs> Block, we ain't doing none of this. But you also have people that sometimes you have to file. All right. Yeah. When, when, when the game is on the line and you need to get the ball back and you just you have to file somebody, sometimes you gotta fight some folk. Yeah. Ain't talking about a physical fight. Amen. But you need you need to have a spiritual fight. You gotta have some folk that get down on their knees and pray and, and actually go down and, and, and seek the Lord on what the direction of the church. But the church is a basketball team. You have shooters. You have people that all of us are collectively, we, we bring something to the table. First Corinthians 12 says, For as the body is one and has many members, but all the members of that one body, being many, are one body. So also is Christ. For by one spirit, we were all baptized into one body. Whether you're Jew, whether you're Greek, whether you're slave, whether you're free, and have all been made to drink in one spirit. So in other words, we are many members, but we are all one body. Amen. I, I cannot say I don't need you. You cannot say you don't need me. Somebody here with you know tonight, you told. It may not be the prettiest ministry. You can do all the hard work, all the all the stuff that everybody just want to do. Is, it's ugly sometimes. You don't get appreciated. You don't get pats on the back. But there's somebody that you do the heart. Everybody just loves you. You, know? you always get all the attention. And, but guess what? The body, they're not jealous of each other. Because they know that somebody got to be the head. Somebody got to be the heart. Somebody got to be the Somebody got to be the heart. We have many members. But we're one. So how are we going to do this? How are we going to move forward? How are we going to do it? We're going to reach, we're going to teach, and we're going to preach. Amen. All right. Reach, teach, and preach. GLF is different. I, 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 Pastor, he said it. We just, we are different. Everybody who comes here says, y'all just, just different. Y'all don't do church. Nothing, not knocking any other ministry. Not knocking. Everybody that brings something to the table. But we're just different. When you come here, we want you to have a, a worship experience. The praise, the worship, but also the word. Amen. All right. When you come Amen. to Jill Love, you're going to leave out of here with a word. All right. All right. Some application. We are, we're not going to come in here and give you a bunch of acronyms and, and, and sing you and preach and boot you out and, and, and give you an emotional shout. When you leave out of here, you should be able to take some meat with you. Amen. Pastors, they say, Point A, B, C. This is how I'm going to get here. This is how I, if I apply these principles, this is the result of it. You want to get some peace. So we're going to preach. But also, we have to teach. Wednesday night Bible study, we've been blessed. Like, those that come on Wednesday night, we have, we have an awesome time. And here in Frisco, what I've been doing is I allow uh, one person to get up, one or two people to get up, and they give a small exhortation about the word, and then how will get up and how preach, teach. What it's doing is, it gives everybody an opportunity to use their gift. Amen. And you'll be surprised. The first time they do it, they're all nervous. The second time, they're like, I feel, I feel so much better about that, you know, because it's all about we're all practicing our gifts. All right. So we're going to preach, we're going to teach, but we got to reach. He said, we have to get outside these four walls. Shepherds don't produce sheep. Amen. Sheep Produce sheep. Everybody expect the pastors to get out there and bring people and produce sheep. Now we we've, we've been called to go out there and teach and preach. God's gonna save them and do, give them injury. Nobody we can't save anybody. It's up to you all, the sheep, to get out there and, and get excited. I'm saying, hey, I don't want to be a part of nothing that's boring. All right. I don't want to be a part of anything that nobody's excited about. All right. I don't. 
when y'all when, when y'all was in the world, was still in the world, when they start hyping up a party and y'all said, Oh, it's gonna be crunk there. We we go, hey, I'm going to that party. Because you want to be a part of something that's fun, you want to be a part of something that's live. If they said, man, they ain't gonna be going on over there, what are you doing? But guess what? If you if you if you're pumping up GLL, man, we have a good time at GLL. We have a holy ghost party and we everybody like to come and see what's going on there. They want to be a part of something that's moving. Something that's alive. They don't want to be a part of something dead. So we have to reach. What you got, guys? Reach. <laughs> <laughs> what he said about being excited. I mean, we had to say in the car is that activity breeds activity. Mm -hmm. You know, you pass out the car lot and there's balloons everywhere, the hood pop. You're going to pull over to see what's going on over there. But if the car lot's dead, you just assume they got horrible cars and horrible deals. So activity breeds activity. And there should be more going on with GLF than just Sunday morning. You know, I tell them in Bruno all the time, Sunday should be a celebration of what we do Monday through Saturday. You know, it's not about standing behind the pulpit. It's not about getting on the drums and the keyboard and saying, oh, we had church. What's more important to God is that we be the church than just having the church. And that happens through you stepping out and starting your own home Bible studies. You know, I, I read a thing that said that most people that were one in the early church, they weren't one at an altar. They weren't one, you know, by coming into the church and the praise team being as awesome as ours is. They were one by somebody inviting them to their home Amen. and telling them about Jesus. They were one because somebody took that lunch break but instead of going to their car and not want to be bothered with that aggravated person at work. They went and sat at the table with them and shared their faith with them. You'd be surprised what God will use you for when you decide to deny yourself, right? right? When you stop um, using it as convenience to just go straight home after work and you know that somebody is dealing with something. God has called us to something so much bigger than what we see. You know, the opportunities that we had, like literally, I was thinking about the other day, I literally preached to thousands of people in the last two years. And I'm not talking two and three thousand, I'm talking tens of thousands of people. And it has nothing to do with how great I am or how great he is. It's our yes. God always honors your yes. When you say yes to the smallest thing God is asking you to do, he will create opportunities for you to reach people that he's trying to reach. We are the hands and feet of Jesus. Nobody has a problem being a mouthpiece. We all like that. We grab the microphone and say hallelujah 25 times. But God has called us to be the hands and feet. And in order to be hands and feet, you have to work. We talk about how great the harvest is, but we don't understand that harvest is more work than planting. Amen. To pull up the crop. Now you got roots that is attached to. You got all of these things going on. We get excited about the harvest, but the harvest is the hardest part of the whole process. But it's also the most rewarding part of the process. There's nothing like looking out into this crowd, looking out at someone, realizing a year ago that they were ready to commit suicide. A year ago, they were telling me they were ready to end their life. A year ago, they knew nothing about Jesus. But because God used me, or God used you to connect to that person, that is rewarding. And that's the thing that keeps you going when you decide that it's not about me, but it's about what God has called me to do. God has equipped me. God has called me. I'm not worried about what people say about me. I'm not worried about, you know what I did last summer? I'm going to do what God has called me to do. And in order to reach people, that's the mindset that we have to have. Nobody in this room is perfect. Amen. Starting with the pool pit. Amen. Nobody in this room is perfect. But everybody in this room is called. Amen. So in a nutshell, we all have to get uncomfortable. Growth and being comfortable don't go together. All right. We need you to become uncomfortable with being comfortable. All right. Amen. 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 And today, I want to do something
we did it. I, I remember when we did this. When we first started the ministry, we didn't have, um, we don't have members. We have partners. The reason why I never wanted to, us to be members is, I told you before, when I, if I'm a member of a gym, that gym owes me something. Right? They, they owe me a service. You know, you come a membership, you think you have privileges. Like, you're supposed to serve me. But a partnership, if I'm partnered with my brother, I bring something to the table, he brings something to the table to make something better. So we have partners. Everybody is, when you partner with us, you bring your gift to the table, and we're going to do something great. Amen. So today, I want us to renew our partnership. And I want you to mean it. If you don't mean it, don't, don't, don't buy in. Don't, don't raise your hand. Don't stand up. Don't do anything. Else. I want you to mean it. If there's no looking down on you, but we need to know who's ready to run. All right. All right. Who's ready to go? Who's ready to serve? Who, we need men. Like that. Our community, the brothers die spiritually. Things that they, they they think the lifestyle that they live is the right way because they don't have anybody to tell them which way to go. And we need people of God to go alongside them and not judge them. They feel comfortable coming to you. You know, one of the greatest things for me when I walk into a community, walk into I walk into a party and everybody just hey, that's love. How you doing? And I can have a normal conversation with them. They don't have to judge them. And I'm just I'm, I'm gonna be me. I'm gonna give you the truth. It's up to us to plant somebody new word, and God gives the increase. All right, all right. All right. All right. Yeah. I told you we can't save anybody. All right. All we can do is keep planting, keep Amen. planting, praying somebody will, somebody will, and sooner or later, God is gonna bring them. God is gonna draw them. Yeah. So we need some people that say, "I'll plant for it. I'll plant for the kingdom. Amen. I'll be that water." So right now, I just want to know. I said, I, if, if, if this is not you, if this is for GLF, I know we may have some visitors, we may have some people that you're not a part of the ministry, and that's fine. This is a community ministry is open to everybody. I just want to know who's ready to run. See, I'm, I'm sharpening my axe right now. I'm ready to get busy for the Lord. If that's you, I want you to stand to your feet right now. All right. If that's you, because I'm ready to run. I want you to stand to your feet. And I said, I respect those that say, I'm not quite ready yet. Trust me, I get it. All right. I get it. My prayer is this. We're going to pray. towards the mark for the prize. It's about the kingdom. It's not about me. It's not about you. But it's all about the kingdom of God. So right now, I want to pray with you. Father God, in the name of Jesus, God, we thank So we thank you for your tears. Thank you, Lord God, for the vision that you place over this ministry. God, we're here to be a mouthpiece for you, to let the world know we're not dead, we're still alive. Because we serve a risen Savior who sit high and you look low, that you're in control of every situation. But God, most of all, that you've given us the Holy Spirit. Yeah. We have some power on the inside of us that everywhere we go, Lord God, we have the power to infect that thing. Yeah. So God, right now, I pray that you would give us the boldness yeah. to stand for the King.
kingdom of God. God, I pray right now that you even that you would expose our gifts to, to each and every person that when we look at you, you're gifted to do this, you're gifted to do that. God, give us an urgency that time is running out. That we need to serve you while it's still there because nighttime is coming, God. God, I thank you for those that stood and said, I'm ready to run for the Lord. God, I pray blessings upon them. God, I pray that you already equip them with what they need, Lord God. That you give them greater revelation. That you give them greater purpose. That you give them greater power, Lord God. That you allow them to have greater works, Lord God. So God, we thank you for their willingness to serve you, God.